information security controls. We're going to look here at the different types of information security controls. In fact, there's a whole array of them. And we're going to start by looking at encryption. In fact, I'm just going to put it here as a type of information security control for the moment. And we're going to go to, into it much more into detail a bit later. The same thing for firewalls. I'm just, you just should memorize and kind of know at this point that this is a type of information security control. Let's get into the more you know, detailed ones and the, that are maybe a bit more difficult to understand. Intrusion detection systems detect abnormal activity on a network. They allow you know, a systems administrator, a chief information security officer kind of looking at a network to see if anything abnormal is happening. So I have seen organizations that had this kind of system in place, but in this particular context I'm thinking about, they had it in place at kind of a, uh, a group level, but not in every single country. Now, there was a hack in a certain country, I guess the weakest point, and they detected it when it kind of went from a localized entity to kind of a group entity. So they did detect the malicious activity, but they didn't detect it at an early stage. They didn't detect it immediately on kind of a, 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 a sub part of the network. You have to understand that often the weakest point of your entire network determines the strength of your entire network. And so an intrusion detection system, which is you know, covering your full networks, in fact, your many different networks, will allow you to see whether any malicious activity is happening on any single part of your network. A common one is antivirus software. I think you've... Uh, You've dealt with these uh, blocks, uh, known security threats. You should have one even on your personal private computer, but please don't get one of those that give you so-called nagware, which are pre-installed on your computer and will give you pop-ups all the time until you buy their software, which I really hate. So antivirus software block, and this is the important part, known security threats. But in fact, most antivirus softwares, you know, they're pretty quick at updating when new security threats are detected, in fact, detected globally. The name for unknown security threats are zero days. That means there have been, you know, zero days since they have been previously detected. And so an antivirus software should be enough you know, uh, assuming it's one that's, you know, can get, get access to all known security threats. Hardware authentication. Authentication is integrated into a device's hardware. Here you see someone holding a phone. Well, the simple fact is someone is, you know, authenticating himself through a biometric control. It's also a fur futuristic, but it's simply you know, it's, it's simply recognizing his thumbprint to be able to give him access to that particular phone. We have user behavior analytics. So a network, a system, knows usual behavior. It knows what users usually do. It might even be able to track down to kind of groups of users or particular users. It knows that someone in an, I don't know, finance function isn't usually going to be going through, uh, you know, certain, uh, you know, administrative folders, maybe folders from, you know, so, some other departments that are completely unrelated, maybe, you know, going through uh, some of the IT files. And so this would be abnormal behavior. Uh, other abnormal behavior might be you know, trying many, 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 many different passwords. I mean, I forget my passwords all the time, and I try 10 of them, but I'm talking about trying, a, you know, a, a thousand of them is absolutely abnormal behavior. Why did I put pictures of kids? Because, well, obviously they're trying to do some behavior that usually this uh, accountant's 
you know, computer wouldn't usually be used for, but obviously they're trying to install games on it. And so, you know, a, a good system, a good computer will be able to you know, detect that there's, you know, abnormal behavior on this, uh, you know, poor little accountant's uh, uh, system. Huh? And one of the means of detecting abnormal behavior is a honeypot, okay? A honeypot is a trap. It's a trap. It's often a fake folder that absolutely no user inside the company should try to access. You know, it's a security mechanism that creates a virtual trap to lure attackers. Say it's going to create a folder called passwords, and it's not going to be encrypted, but it would seem to be an alluring target for any hacker to look at passwords, or say, you know, just call it bank account data. And so it would seem to be an alluring target for any hacker to get that bank account data. But in fact, it's a trap. It's a trap because the passwords or bank account data are not there. What is there is a system that alerts the system administrator that someone has tried to get access to that in a very weird way. Say, you know, a, a system that requires you know, uh, uh, hacking a little, you know, so, so, you know, hacking so that it's uh, definitely an illicit practice, but hacking into a folder, but if it may be, uh, maybe a very easy hack to get into a folder, but in fact that folder is, that, but in fact that folder is just a honeypot. We could have a data loss prevention system. So, a data loss prevention system restricts users from sending confidential data outside a network. You might have seen kind of a similar version of this if you are, say, you know, copying data from your computer to a company network uh, or from a company network to a personal computer, especially that uh, second case, because it, the system might say, you know, you are not allowed to copy this data, and it could either be that, you know, it kind of, you know, sends a little alert in the log, uh, or it could be that, uh, you know, you have to get authorization to copy it into a certain way. Um, often, data on a certain part of a network would be completely restricted from being copied onto another part of the network or another interface. So, one common, very simple one is, say, you know, checking that, uh, say, you know, your, your network can't copy things. The second one is, say, verifying that USB drives are blocked to be able to copy data onto a third-party, non-authorized USB key. Uh, and maybe for that, you know, for unblocking that special USB key, you know, you need a special little password from IT or from someone else to be able to access that data and transfer that data. Uh, machine learning for threat detection. When you hear machine learning, you think about something that's very complicated and, and difficult, uh, but not necessarily. Um, it's kind of the use of artificial intelligence to identify threat patterns. So I told you the little example of you know, me using Python to uh, you, you know, understand the, the mood of tweets. It's not very complicated for a systems administrator or a programmer to, you know, you know, th these are also pre-built applications uh, for, you know, looking through a system to see things that would be abnormal in that system and to, you know, use machine learning to detect threats. Now, the only way that machine learning is going to learn about the threats is if there is one, enough data, and two, enough threats or problems. Why is this? Because machine learning works by having something happen and then it's going to look for all the circumstances and you know, related, correlated events that came to that event. At the beginning, a, often a human might say, this is problematic, okay? This, is, this, this little thing is problematic. Or maybe at the beginning, you know, um, our machine intelligence is going to have a human say, this is, this is a cat, 
this is a cat, okay? <laughs> uh, don't let cats into the uh, you know perimeter of uh, uh, of the organization. They're dangerous to whatever we're we're having here. I don't know, uh, chicken coop. Anyway, um, so it it would be able to detect this certain thing what, with, with a certain amount of learning, and the more that you teach the system that this is a cat or this is a malicious activity or this is an unauthorized transaction, the more it will be able to find those things by itself. And so that is how machine learning will work to be able to find anything from malicious activities to unauthorized cats. And cloud computing security. So cloud computing is the idea not that your data is stored in clouds per se, not the physical type that you see outside our window, but indeed, it's kind of network storage. So large network storage at different locations around the world, often by you know, humongous data centers. And so that's what we call the cloud. You, know, you, you have uh, you know, 10 gigabytes on your um, you know, iPhone cloud or your Google Drive. You are technically using cloud computing. In fact, in, in, in fact, if you're using Office uh, 365, you are already using a cloud application. So for those cloud applications, we would expect a certain amount of controls, controls and technologies to protect uh, the cloud data uh, application and uh, infrastructure against any potential threats. Mm -hmm.